Rugby League's grand old lady, Central Park, has been staging matches for just a day short of 97 years, and some of the world's greats have pulled on the cherry and white. Few more famous than Lance Todd, the club's first ever overseas signing in 1908, whose name lives on on the trophy awarded to Man of the Match in the Challenge Cup final. But August the 27th, 1921, will be remembered as one of Central Park's greatest ever days, when a 17-year-old Welshman made his debut. When Wigan signed Jim Sullivan in 1921, they paid him £750 for a 12-year contract, and Wales was depressed at that time, and Sullivan was in bread queues and soup kitchens. And he came, he's a 17-year-old, unemployed, apprentice boilermaker, earning seven and six a week. He got a 12-year contract. He came to Wigan, he stayed 31 years as player, player coach, coach, and then manager, and he became an institution in Wigan, and he turned Central Park into a sort of rugby league university. He was, he was a, a great character, and I think, along with Billy Boston, was Wigan's greatest player. And in 1929, Sullivan led the Wigan team to win the first Challenge Cup final at Wembley. Sullivan kicking the first ever goal beneath the Twin Towers in a 13-2 win over Dewsbury, one of 774 appearances for this famous club. In the early years, there were no niceties like dressing rooms for the players who had to change in a local pub, the Prince of Wales, and walk to the ground. Despite that, they queued for hours to watch some of the biggest names in the game. We were an unusual Wigan team, actually, because um, we were more or less a local lads team, when previously Wigan had always been a team of outsiders. When I signed for Wigan, and I came to play with such players as Jim Sullivan and Jackie Marley and Jack Garvey, they were more or less um, my idols at school really and it was a great feeling to run on the same field as them and play with them. They were always in the mood to watch their heroes, the stars of rugby league at the time. Who could ever forget Sullivan's boys of the 30s? But the standards at Central Park reached even greater heights in 1950 when they supplied a record eight Great Britain tourists. And in 1953, another Welshman checked in and became probably the greatest Wiganer of all time. There was a resurgence when Boston came because he was a great player. Probably the best that's ever been, I think. I once saw an opposition fullback on his ground turn round and applaud Billy Boston to the line after he'd just beaten him. Yeah, it was one, one Wednesday night against uh, Workington and Johnny Lawrenson was playing fullback for Workington and Boston had scored three tries and when Workington kicked off right near the end of the game, some white shouted, come on Billy, give us another and almost as if to say, okay, he got the ball, he just ran through the whole Workington team and plonked the ball down under the sticks and Johnny Lawrenson turned round and applauded him all the way to the line. It was incredible, but he has scored some marvellous tries. Now, it's not just the great players we remember today. When the bulldozers move in next week, it will also mark the end of an era for Keith Hoff, who's been a matchday steward here for 50 years. It started when I was 12 years old on the uh, scoreboard. My cousin who played for Wigan got me on the scoreboard, putting the scores up by hand then. It wasn't, there was no such thing as an electronic scoreboard, and I had to put all the scores up and keep... I had to have a good memory for figures. When we had the old wooden stand, we used to run about and somebody would say, stands are fire again. And we used to have to run out with a bucket of water and pour it on the stand, <laughs> the old wooden stand on the Douglas side and put the fire out. But it's the players who've really set the ground alight for 97 years, like the great Eric Ashton, St Helens born, but a Wigan legend. Marvellous memories of St Central Park. And, and I think really it is, it's a shame that it, it has to close, but that's progress. I mean, life goes on and uh, It'll be forgotten maybe in two or three years' time, but it's, uh, it's marvellous memories for me. In 1980, Wigan hit rock bottom, relegated to the second division. Step in the Central Park gang of four, Rathbone, Robinson, Hilton, and a certain Morris Lindsay. I've been down here in the middle of winter, three o'clock in the morning, panicking in case the frost was getting into the ground. I've come down at lunchtime, sometimes on Sunday, and then shifting snow with the 300, 400 supporters. Pretty special place. And the good times came rolling back to this special place, thanks to men like Graham West, and from a little nearer home, Sean Edwards. Well, my only strength in Central Park are uh, trying to sneak in to watch the first team, so try to get in without pain. I must have known every little nook and cranny of the place. Even though I was only about six, seven years of age, and I used to be able to squeeze through the tiny balls, get onto the ground for free. 
my school, my primary school, was right on Central Park. A week or two the field from, from the classroom. That's probably why I was usually at the bottom of the class, because I was, I was too busy looking at the ground, dreaming of playing rugby for Wigan. No journey was too long, no mission impossible. Wigan's Australians arrived. Well, I had a lot of good uh, memories at Central Park uh, when I was over there at Wigan. I don't think we actually lost a game there. But uh, as far as those grandstands and that were concerned, they were a little old. I mean, I, I guess that's what we're looking back now, 84, 85. But it's um, a, a nice place and uh, the, the stands were very close to the ground, so they're a very good atmosphere. We've seen some great Central Park nights, but for excitement, few could rival one in 1987. We'd been challenged by the Australians, the Manly Club, uh, who thought they would just hop over on a plane and beat up the little English boys and nip back to Australia and tell everybody how good they were. And Manly were the famous club, coached by Bobby Fulton, the Manly coach, so they had everything going for them. And we played here, and we had to close the gates, and there were 40,000 people here. And Wigan beat Manly eight points to two. No tries, but what a game. And Wigan, coached by Graham Lowe, ruled the world. Lowe was followed into Central Park by arguably their greatest coach of all time, John Money, who gave the fans 15 trophies to cheer. It's probably a memory of all the great players that played there. Uh, Andy Gregory, Sean Edwards, Elry, Gene Miles, Dean Bell. The list is endless. Uh, Martin O'Fire. And um, probably to sum it up, it's, uh, you know, I, I just think of excitement. And the Wigan players continued to hold the Central Park faithful spellbound. Men like Andy Gregory, Wigan-born, but who arrived via Witness and Warrington. And he was followed in by Martin Afire. Well, the few stand out, I suppose, the most, most ones when I scored 10 tries in, uh, in 1992, my first season there, against Leeds. I think it was a semi-final of... Uh, the premiership and that was a very special day for me. Ophaya spent many magical moments with Wigan as they embarked on their annual harvest of gathering all the cups in May. So today Central Park bids farewell to the modern greats. It's a summer game now, but whoever pulls on that cherry and white jersey still has that winning habit. Another turning point, a fork stuck in the road. Time grabs you by the rest, directs you where to go. So Every single day I've, I've, I've drove past Central Park and it's always, it's always been something special as a kid. I've always wanted to play here. And uh, as I've turned professional, I've always, I've always played here all my professional life. So, um, you know, it's a very special place, and even today, it's, uh, it's just as special for me to play a league game or a big game. It doesn't really matter. Central Park will always stay special to the Wigan players and the Wigan public. There'll definitely be a tear in, in my eye when Central Park goes. Um, There's a hell of a lot of tradition. Such a massive park in my life. It's, it's incredible. I've been there once or twice watching reserve games as well, and, and the memories start flooding back, and it's easy to get quite emotional, actually. So as if there was one word I could use to uh, describe the feeling, of playing in at Central Park in front of a big crowd, I'd have to say, it was in inspiring. A lot of good memories and a lot of good players. The 13 years I spent here um, were the most important and the most rewarding of my entire life. Well, I'd be sorry to see that that go. There's that many memories here. Irreplaceable. I wish we were back again. <laughs> Rugby League par excellence. I've seen the cream of Rugby League over the years here. And uh, Central Park has been a much loved ground, but it, it's got all now and tired, and I think it's time to move on. It's something unpredictable, but in the end that's right. I hope you had that time.